Typically at this point, I give you some sort of intro of, as to who my guest is and what we talk about, but this person needs no introduction. My next guest is Sky Michaels. If you're not familiar with him, he is hands down one of the best coaches out there for the real estate space. So let's get started. As always, I'm your host and referral partner out of San Francisco, Sean Kunkler. Sky, let's go. Uh, this is awesome. I'm so happy to have you back for a second time. I am so thrilled to be back. And it's just, I, you know, just a, our little pre-talk even got me so excited for this call. Uh, it, it, me too. It's funny. I just was like, I just have to hit record because I feel like there's so much good stuff that you and I just like trip over and we go on to the next thing. And yeah. um, I love it. You always bring the energy. You have a very, yeah. very different perspective on the business, which I definitely want to delve into. Yeah. Um, you've kind of morphed and evolved, which is amazing. And you're now in, more in the coaching space, but let's dive headfirst right away with the people you're working with more specifically, the realtors across yeah. the nation. What yeah. are you seeing? Whew. I have never seen the morale of the realtor community be at an, at this all time low. Um, and I am wow. seeing, uh, it is a tale of two realtors, right? You have the one realtor, some realtors who are just sort of saying, all right, like, give me the facts, give me the situation. I'm going to accept what is, and I'm going to dominate it. And then you have other realtors who are sort of scared and freaking out and sort of stuck, I would say a little bit. And mm -hmm. neither, neither group is wrong, right? It, it's just the way they're reacting to the current market. And honestly, there a lot of everyone across the board for the most part is tired as well. It's been a very long road post COVID. That's interesting. I, I, and I haven't, I've never stepped back and thought of it and reflected on it in that yeah. way, but you're right. We are tired. Like yeah. we've seen just, I think radical, radical changes every six months. So and, for the past four years. And four so years. Yeah. I think you're right at the core of it. We're just, we're all a little exhausted. We're just like, yeah. what are you going to throw at us next? Totally. I mean, I, you know, I started selling real estate in 2002 and you know, we had bumps in no way and stuff like that. But for the most part, selling real estate was just selling real estate. True. And in 2020, when COVID hit where we can sort of trace this exhaustion back to, yeah. Right. All of a sudden selling real estate was not just selling real estate. Selling real estate was navigating life, uh, life threatening virus. Yeah. Selling real yeah. estate was different. States were doing different things. Selling real estate was political, right? Essential, mm -hmm. non-essential. Uh, then we emerged from COVID and we had this just insane market all across the country that was frankly not not enjoyable for most people. Yes, were they selling real estate and making money? And but they just ran and killed themselves, frankly. Yeah. And almost almost in a month, things just screeched to a halt with interest rates spiking up. And then we have an NAR ruling and Department of Justice looking at practices that everyone is doing legally, but are we're being told that this is actually we're gonna need to adjust everything we've been doing for our entire careers. And when you think about jamming all that into four years, it is no wonder people feel tired and exhausted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you put it like that, I mean, I've been living in it, but yeah. I, I haven't lifted my head to, to look at it for, again from that perspective. And it's so interesting. It's so true. It's just, yeah. it's like we just ran a marathon to run another marathon only to start another marathon. And we're like, exactly. Yeah. Oh and every God. time you think that marathon is over and you're at the finish line, the finish line moves. Yeah. Right. And that's like, that's the challenge is that we're not, we're not ever really completing this marathon yeah. and getting to the other end of it because there's a continual, uh, there's a continual barrage of new changes, new uh, nuances, new rulings, new things that are being thrown at everyone. And like I said, we just haven't been able to catch our breath one after the other after the other so yeah yeah and that's what i enjoy talking to you yeah. um there's a lot of coaches who are prescriptive and it's like oh you just need to make more calls you need to do yeah. this where yeah. what i enjoy about you is you'll step back and you look at the whole picture holistically and say 
hey, listen, it kind of makes sense why you're here. All this yeah. stuff is happening yeah. and it's okay. Yeah. But like, let's help you move out of that position. That's why like the very first program I launched uh, with our coaching was called the happier human. And mm. this happier human program actually takes the philosophy that most realtors actually don't need more coaching on real estate. Yeah. Most realtors know what to do, but they're, so exhausted and tired and disconnected and overwhelmed and really just sort of in their own way or unhappy. The yeah. biggest thing we need to do is actually coach the human being. And then the real estate stuff is going to take care of itself because as a realtor starts to shift and change and get happier, get healthier, get more connected mm -hmm. to themselves as a human being, but other human beings in their world, all of a sudden now, the things they know they should do that they're not doing are easier to do and become more enjoyable. You know, like connecting with your sphere, wishing people happy birthday, holding yeah. events, working in your CRM, you, you name it. Everyone, at least everyone we know at Compass, they know what to do. They're just not doing it. 100%. Right? Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. We all, if you've had any level of success at any point, you know exactly what to do. It, yeah. it, it's funny. I feel like this is turning into a therapy session because so much of you're <laughs> saying, I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm totally yeah. doing, I am totally burnt out most of the time and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing the things I enjoy. Like when you just said hosting an event, I'm like, oh, I'd love I, like planning the event and executing and do all, I hate doing that stuff, but yeah. I have an amazing staff. To, to help with that, but yeah. showing up and hanging out with a client and like, I, I had a client who went to South Africa, like learning about their trip. That brings amazing. me joy. Like yeah. that's amazingly exactly. awesome. Yeah. And yeah. it's so much more healthier for the business than me just trying to grind through things that are just. Yeah. Make more calls. Right. Oh. It's like what, what you hear. And I think most coaches fall into the trap that they need to show results. So hence, Hey, if I, if I make Sean do a hundred more calls a week, I know he's going to get business and that's true, right? Yeah. Like Sean, if you made a hundred phone calls a week, I know you're going to get more business, but that does not mean that a it's sustainable mm -hmm. and then B you're going to enjoy it. So instead, yeah. what can we do to coach you as a human being and actually un unblock you from the things you love doing? and then shift your energy, shift your focus into this world where you are actually taking action with these things mm -hmm. that matter to you authentically and individually. And that's where we unlock magic. And sometimes those results are not clearly visible right away, right? Th sometimes those are the results that are gonna happen two, three, four, five months ago. But I think a lot of coaches fall into the trap that in order for this client to employ me, I need them to see the result right now. Yeah. And that's a philosophy that I just don't prescribe to. I want to make sure I'm, I'm like the, you know, if you go to your doctor and you say you have heart, high blood pressure and your doctor gives you a drug, that's like most of the coaching out there, right? hundred percent. And as long as you take that drug, you're going to be okay. But the minute you take the drug, you, your blood pressure comes back and you never address the factors that gave it to you. Right. I want to be that doctor that you meet with that says, Hey, we're going to meet a dietitian. We're going to create a workout plan. We're going to lose weight. And then we're going to do all these really, really healthy things. And then magically three months from now, there's no, Hey, your blood pressure is great. And there's no need for medication and you're extremely happy, healthy, and more connected as a human being. <laughs> That's the entire goal. Yeah. And I, I mean, I fully, I'm, I'm a hundred percent on board with that approach as well. And to your point, that's a hard one for a lot of people to swallow. Like they're paying for coaching and they're expecting I want results tomorrow. And you're like, that's not how this works. Like Amazon yeah. does that. I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. Exactly. And we're, we're in this instant gratification society now where if I want a uh, McDonald's at midnight, <laughs> I can take my phone and order. If I want a Starbucks at, you know, uh, nine in the morning at my doorstep, I can get it. And this technology has created this instant gratification uh, world where the vast majority of things that make us happier and healthier are not instant gratification, right? And and I think it goes back as well, Sean, to every realtor out there needs to let go of focusing on outcomes mm -hmm. and you have to start to focus on processes. Yeah. Like obsess about the process. 
and don't obsess about the outcomes. And I think that's what has become really challenging for people is, you know, especially as the markets have changed and interest rates gone up, maybe your business has slowed down and the outcomes that you wanted to create aren't there, but you never really created the processes. It was just coming because money was cheap to borrow and it was just this frenzy of a market, right? hundred well, percent. Now what we need to do is go back to the basics of this business, focus on what is the process I use to build my, my business, build my relationships, build my referrals, and only focus on that, not even worry about the outcomes. Because the outcomes are going to come as a result of the processes. But I think that's where a lot of realtors are, getting, are becoming exhausted. They didn't really build the processes in this crazy market we had. Mm -hmm. And now we're, they're suffering the consequences of that. Well, and I think there's a there's like a subtle nuance that you shared within all of that is you can't rush a relationship like you can yes. build one and they just they take time and they it's like you and I getting to know each other through doing the podcast and shooting yes. texts to each other and phone calls like it wasn't like this like instant thing. It's yes. this building process. And to your point, if you go back and figure out what are those activities that are going to set you up to build those relationships that's that's yeah. the thing that'll feed you for life but yeah. I, again everybody's looking for that quick hit it's like oh i, I can pay 500 bucks and get these leads you know like that other person's gonna get you 500 bucks you're not gonna get anything exactly <laughs> exactly and and then your frustration is even higher and the, all that time you spend on these leads coming in that are just not even real people or real buyers uh, you're ignoring your greatest asset, yeah. which is your relationships, your humanity. Your greatest asset costs you nothing. And that is like this mindset yes. shift for all the realtors listening to this. Recognize that your humanity is your greatest asset, but you have to use it. And most of us yeah. just aren't using it right now. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is fascinating, too, if you just kind of you think about humans and human psychology and, and then more specifically your buyers and sellers. At the end of the day, they work with you because it's you. Yeah. Like they, the, the final decision was because on some level they liked and trusted you yep. or dare I say loved and trusted you. And that's why that's yeah. why they felt comfortable enough proceeding with you to the next step. Exactly. And it's that's the that is the essence of that whole piece. Exactly, exactly. And, and a, you think about a world where those relationships, to your point, were not built overnight. They were built over years. And exactly. And we've, I think COVID started it. I actually go back. I think third party aggregators, right, that produce leads started it before sure. COVID, where we got used to having emails come in with people we didn't know. And then COVID created this separation where we were doing Zoom calls, right? And we created mm -hmm. virtual closings. We, we created more disconnection as human beings. Yep. And then I think that's just sort of continued. And when you think about a world that we're walking into, technology can do certain things that we used to do better. What yep. technology cannot do, technology can't replace us as human beings. And that's the thing that people need to lead into is what can I do to make someone feel like they matter? Technology will not make us, someone feel like they matter. Technology just creates, you know, smoothness in a process and time and a little bit of that. Sure, but when sure. you make someone feel like they matter, what they do for you in return is infinite. And that's, I think, this thing. There's a great Simon Sinek book, like Play the Infinite Game. Mm -hmm. We're not playing a finite game where there's an end, end result, right? This is not four quarters. We're playing an infinite game. And the people that play an infinite game invest in relationships, in connections. And when you start investing in these connections, the returns are infinite. We, yeah. we can't even calculate what they are. And that's what we need to be doing, in my opinion, in the real estate industry. I'm on the same page. I mean, and, and if you just look at really simple math and back into that, most people, according to NAR, stay in their property <laughs> for 14 years. Yeah. And so if you just sold them a place, you're going to have to maintain that relationship for 14 years before mm -hmm. they call you again. And the other data point is 
every person knows three people who are going to buy or sell by the end of the year. Right. And so there's so many great opportunities within just maintaining that relationship. That's it. And That's it. I just, yeah. just hang out with people. <laughs> and, and I think we, like I said, when, remember when I said a couple minutes ago, we focus on the outcome. I realtors, you know, you're, you're sort of coaching people and they're like, well, I, I know this person's not going to sell. I'm like, who cares? It's not about them selling. Yeah. It's about being in a relationship with them because then when you make them feel like they matter, they advocate for you. A hundred percent. Yeah. Your goal as a realtor is to have 300 people advocating for you at all times. Yeah. And they, you do that by making people feel like they matter and by caring about them. That's it. Yeah. And it's really, again, it's like not, it's not hard. It's simple. Yeah. Like what, what you're sharing is like, it's the same way you built a relationship with your best friend. It didn't happen right. overnight. It started with like bumping into them, finding some common threads, shooting texts to each other, phone calls, <laughs> hanging out. Like it just, it built, it evolved. Same thing. It's it. It's it. <clears throat> it's it. And, and you meant, we mentioned events before. I coached a little bit to this, taking this word events and throwing out the traditional idea, right? Yeah. Where it's like, you know, big happy hours, client appreciation parties. You could create micro events sure. around walking your dog, going for a hike, taking the kids to the park, uh, you know, working out. These, these could be like, quote unquote, micro events where you actually go for walking your dog in a nice little trail and you invite your clients. Hey, I know you got a dog. I'm taking my dog out this Saturday morning for a little bit of a long, long hike. You know, would you want to come bring your dog? Right. Imagine if you did that every single week <laughs> and didn't cost you any money, where your relationships would go. It's so true. And we overthink this. We overthink this. So it's we more way simple. Overthink it. And, and right. to, you know, if you just think of basic human psychology and you think about, again, your friend, even if yep. you think of an acquaintance, you know more than you know more about them than than just what they do. That's right. Like if you're going to hang out over a dog, you're probably going to talk about vacations and travel and your your side hobby, whatever it is. Like it, it, you, and that's that is the relationship. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And what you what are you usually not talking about real estate unless they have the need, right? And I think that's the thing as realtors, we often are trying to always create the perfect marketing email. Yeah perfect newsletter, the perfect this about real estate. The reality is 90% of the people, probably 95% of the people that you know, at this moment in time, don't care about real estate, hundred percent, but they care about their life. And so if we stay rooted in that mode and we treat people that we know, you know, like people, when that real estate conversation does come up in their life, we are going to be the trusted person they come to or when the three people that they do know that are buying or selling, if we are in a deep relationship for us with them, they're going to advocate for us. And that, that's, that's the name of the game. That's the whole ball of wax right there. And I love that you said that early on in my career, we, I, I decided to create a relationship marketing in the, in the back end of the business where right. it's, it's, it's less about postcards and more about, like little gifts that are actually that people want to keep. Like they're not just going to like tchotchkes where they throw them out, but they're yeah. like really nice mugs and things like that. But then within that, they're getting handwritten note cards and texts and phone calls yeah. and birthday wishes, the yeah. whole nine yards. And my philosophy, when we were writing it at the very top of the page, I wrote, I don't want it to be a matter of if they call us, it's only going to be a matter of when. Ugh. And, and I, I wanted to always stay like they're in the driver's seat when they're ready, they're ready. Like, yeah. and there's nothing I can do to change the conversation they're already having in their head, period. Yeah. But when they're ready, I want to yeah. be the first person they call, even if they're just like, Hey, it may or may not happen. We're just mulling this over knowing that I will offer zero pressure and that's I'll right. just give advice. And that's, that's always been my 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 thinking right. but it, it has yeah. to your point it has gotten incredibly hard and i feel like even myself i've gotten out a lot of good habits during covid and now i've reverted yeah. to 
the easy habits where it's it's easy yeah. to text somebody it's harder to call yeah it's easier to call <laughs> exactly. than it is to show up um yeah and so I, and and i have to kind of jostle myself and be like hey don't just take the easy route like that's right yeah. do yeah. the next and also like come into what is your process right what mm -hmm. let's let's not just let's just not force ourselves to do things let's actually create a plan and a process and then follow the plan and process yeah and then that'll create the results and i think that's where we're feeling a lot of exhaustion when every day we wake up and we really don't know what to do or have a plan to follow to solve exhaustion and, and overwhelm if if you have a plan and you follow that plan you usually are not tired and overwhelmed yeah. Usually you're in control, you're calm, you're moving forward, you feel energized, you feel uh, excited when you have a plan and you follow it, right? That's and that's, I think, the downfall for most realtors is we just don't have a plan and processes in place that we can follow. So we wake up every morning in a state of panic yeah. of like, oh my God, where is my next paycheck coming? And then we just spin our wheels and we got to break this cycle. We got to get into this mode of being ultra professionals. We got to get in into the old school basics that we know how to do. We just mm -hmm. got to rebuild those, right? And we just got to get back into this business of being human beings. It's, it's, it's fascinating as you share that about like the process. And, and I feel like even with my life, it, it starts the night, it's almost at all of it starts the night before, right? If my sleep gets out of whack, of when I go to bed, then when I wake up gets out of whack, and then my yep. my first workout gets out of whack, and then I show up late or frantic to my first meeting, and then it's like this snowball effect, and then and then I'm taking calls at nine o'clock at night, and I'm again it's like I'm pushing my sleep time, and then I'm waking up late, and but I feel like for me personally, those those times when I pulled myself back out of that chaos is I started to go to bed at a consistent time. I started to wake up at a consistent time. My workouts happened at a consistent time and they ended at a consistent time. And then I had with that coach, like, here's your workout step by step. That's right. Do yep. this <laughs> on these exactly. days. And then, yeah. and, 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 but I also get a lot of people don't like to be regimented like that. I find that if I can cut down the amount of decisions I have to make, in a day, I can make much better decisions, bigger decisions, faster with more decisiveness. That's and, right. and ultimately I feel, I just feel better. Yeah. Whereas if it's like, I'm deciding on everything and everything. And by the time dinner comes around, it's like, I'm just going to eat cereal. Cause I'm so decision <laughs> fatigued by this point. Like yep. I can't even figure out what direction is up. <laughs> exactly. It's so funny. And and you, that is, that's like the perfect analogy for most realtors businesses, right? They yeah. walk into, it's like walking into the gym with no idea how to lift a weight, what to do, eat, no plan. And you, so you just sort of like pick something up, move around. Next thing you know, an hour goes by and you're like, all right, let me go. Let me leave here. Cause I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> And I think most realtor business is like, like that. They wake up, they log into their email. They, you know, they answer some emails, they check social media. They, they, you know, they, they bounce around a little bit. They go get coffee and then they're like, all right, well, nothing to do, you know? And that's what we got to get away from. We have to move into a world where we have a process. I wake up, I take care of myself. Now I've gotten myself into this really great energetic state. The first thing I do is I, I do X or Y or Z. It doesn't matter. Like it's not, there's one, not one prescription for every person, but we have to have a system that we're able to replicate to your point, lessen the decision-making because when your brain is making decisions and you're tired, you're going to probably make bad decisions because your 100%. brain is just protecting you. That's all it's doing. Just trying to keep you safe and it doesn't want to push you. It just wants to keep you safe. So not making the phone call, not asking someone to meet for coffee, not, you know, working in your CRM is actually your brain telling you, I, I want to keep you safe. Because if you mm. reach out to that person and they reject you, now you're in emotional harm. So it's easier to just not reach out. It's safer. 
So we got to push ourselves. Isn't that crazy to think about? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. it's totally, yeah. It, to it, it completely makes sense. Like your brain is trying to protect itself. Like let's not do like this perceived risky behavior, which totally isn't. That's right. And so yeah. you do nothing and then you have more of nothing. And then you wonder why you have so much nothing. <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's it. It's so, so crazy. So, and, and like I said, I think that's what I'm excited about. Um, you know, being able to launch this company and being able to help yeah. people at the level that I'm helping. It's like, it, uh, it is, it truly is my life's calling to help people learn how to be happy and healthy. Like that's, that's it, whether it's through real estate, whether it's through reading books or morning routines or evening routines or meditation, whatever it is, the, whatever the vehicle is like, that's really what I was put on this earth to do is to help people mm -hmm. with this. So it feels so good to be that. in this mode finally as well. It's fascinating that, I mean, you said like, finally, it's, it's fascinating. I feel like you have always been <laughs> doing this. It's, it's like yeah. th this new iteration is just the culmination of all these amazing pieces. Um, that's it. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what it I, feels like, like this culmination in many ways. Right. Cause I've, I've had these pieces and pieces and pieces, yeah. and now it's like, I get to put them all together and bring that out into the world in a, in a, just a beautiful package. So it's really fun. That is really cool. And I do, I feel like with, with what you're doing is again, as I shared earlier is you, you bring a very unique holistic approach to the whole experience of, of yeah. being an agent because our agents or our lives rather have just so much overlap. Everything just overlaps. Yep. It, we we don't really have this division of I go to work over here and then I turn off my phone and my computer and now I'm living this life over here. We don't have that. And so all yep. of this stuff bleeds into the next. And so to have a coach who can empathize and understand and who was there and, and, and is like, hey, I totally get this. Let's let's steer you down in this direction. That's right. Is I just think that's really empower like really empowering and powerful. To, to have yeah, that approach yeah. it is and i think that's a that's the other thing that i do love about my coaching i i've sold over a thousand houses in my career right i Incredible. ran a huge team so I, everything that i'm coaching to or anything the realtors are experiencing i've been there i've yeah. done that right i feel that i can empathize and i think as a coach you know to create breakthroughs we got to start with empathy and understanding an acknowledgement and then start to shift when we start with hey you shouldn't don't feel that you shouldn't feel that you're doing that wrong change this don't do this all of a sudden now that person feels diminished and one of the first things we need to do as or i try to do as a coach is is let's make sure we repair some of the damage that's been done internally and externally and then start to move forward and that's why like i said with my coaching sometimes the, we're talking about working out. Like one of my clients right now owns a brokerage and we legitimately have not talked about business in six weeks. And our entire coaching experience has been about his health. This man has lost 11 pounds. He's sleeping through the night again. He's working on his relationship with his wife. He's doing all this stuff. And our last coaching call, he's like, you would never know, you would never believe what's happening in my business. And I'm like, no, I actually, you've been selling real estate for 30 years. I know you know how to sell real estate. You were just so miserable when we started working together. I'm just shifting your energy. Yeah. And even though we're not talking about business, everything you're doing is translating into the business. For sure. And it's, it's just awesome to watch this whole process unfold. And uh, anyways, yeah, so when he said, you know, he's weighing in every month. And he literally lost 11 pounds this month. He's like, I've, this is, yeah, he's That's so amazing. excited. That's and huge. And, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm his real estate coach. I haven't talked real estate in six weeks. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing being able to shift. And now some clients were talking to hardcore real estate, right? So yeah. it just, it's being able to bring to the client what the client needs in those scenarios. So it's just so fun. That is super cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, my background is, is from the health and fitness industry yeah. and I ran martial arts schools and, and then I, I went on to work at 
very high end health clubs. And so I'm always and have been a huge proponent of just healthy lifestyle because I think how you show up for yourself is how you will show up for others. And if you're just a hot mess, it's like you're not going to be that that grounded anchor that the client That's needs right. in that chaotic environment. And so yeah, it's it's fascinating and I can totally imagine this person who lost 11 pounds, they must feel better. So now when they're showing up to talk to one of their agents, they have just a different stride, <laughs> like the, a different <laughs> outlook and like positivity begets positivity. And so I, right. I can only imagine. And then they, and then that person shows up to a date night with their, with their <laughs> spouse <laughs> and like, they're not all exhausted and worn down from carrying an extra 11 pounds. They're not like beaten up from the week. They got an extra spring in this step. And so, yeah, I can, I mean, I totally see it, but, but it also takes a high level coach to kind of step back and be like, Hey, you know what, if we actually fix this, this one tiny little thing way over here to the right, it fixes 20 other things over here to the left. So why don't we just fix that one thing first? That's right. Exactly. So it's really cool. So, and I, you know, the other cool thing too, is like knowing realtors as well as I do and knowing what they're going through. So I'm, I'm playing right now with a program I'm going to call micro trainings. So by the way, this is not, this is the first time I'm ever talking about this publicly and Love it's it. not live yet, but I actually, I'm going to talk to you about it, Sean, because I'm actually curious to get your feedback. But I think a lot of realtors struggle with coaching programs and trainings because it's a huge time commitment. It's extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. It sometimes is overwhelming because you're learning all this stuff that you have to figure out how to implement into your business. Mm -hmm. So what if there's a world where there are coaching, pro I, I had coaching programs where we did micro trainings. Like imagine a world where it was a 20 minute training on just one concept that you could implement. And it, and it cost $50, for example. And it was like, yeah. I'm going to teach you two text messages that you could send to everyone you know over the next 30 days to get one listing right? or two, who knows, and unlimited listings. You don't know. But all I'm going to do is teach you these two text messages in 20 minutes. And I'm going to teach you how to use this, how to implement it in your business, use it in your CRM. And that's it. Just that's one little concept. And then it's $50. And then good luck. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I think this could actually be a key moving forward is these micro trainings. I think even more so if you're able to shave it down to five or 10 minutes and like the, the, like here's your one, literally here's your one action item. <laughs> it's kind of like when it's you send a, an, an email to a client, you don't, and you're trying to close the deal. You don't ask yeah. 20 questions. You ask one <laughs> surgical question. It's, it's like that. Um, yeah. I, I, which I actually think that's the biggest thing. And I know from having team members is, and I'm sure you see this with coaching. If you give somebody 20 tasks to do, they do zero. If you give them one yeah. task to do, they'll get it done. Exactly. So yeah. I think if it was like a one, the $50 yeah. is. Yeah. It's totally like, it's almost like, a, it's like, why would I not do this? You know? And, and anyway, so I'm playing with this concept for August of micro trainings. Partly because the month of August, number one, there's very little going on from a training perspective. And mm. also most people are either on vacation or getting back to school. So you don't have the time to commit to like a week long training or yeah. days of trainings or whatever it might, you know, seven week course, et cetera, in August. Um, so I'm playing with this concept of having these little micro trainings. And to your point, maybe it's like 10 minutes you know, yeah. and it's just one text message, but this is how you use it. And, and then, and then we'll continue anyways. So stay tuned on this, Sean. I think it's a really good concept. And I think you're on to something. I think I it's, yeah. it's simple and it's simple it and actionable. Like yeah. those are the two hardest things. Like I know for me in my, my life, you know, we go to these trainings and then it's either too much information you get, you implement nothing out of it. Cause it's, you're just in, it's kind of like going to a retreat for yeah. four days. You wind up like yeah. by the last day you're drooling, your your brain is flooded and you're like, I have so much information rattling around my head. I don't even know what to put into play first. And then you wind up yeah. putting nothing into play. <laughs> exactly. Um, but exactly. I think you're on it. Like, I think you're, 
there's You're something there. there. Something there. There's yeah. something there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got to come up with like the topics and stuff, but it's, there's something really unique with this that I yeah. think what I always try to think of as a coach too, what is no one else doing in the marketplace? Yeah. And no one else is doing micro trainings in the marketplace. So I, I have a thought, but I'm going to save it till off air. Okay. Um, great. I'd and I want to, I'll, I'll, yeah, I want to share it with you. Um, I'm writing myself a note so I don't forget. Great. Um, sorry to tease it out to the whole audience, but you'll have to. Yeah. Wait. And to the audience, what I'm really doing is I'm just setting up a third appearance right now. So, <laughs> just... <laughs> oh, man, I'm you're just... welcome to come on anytime. I always enjoy these, enjoy these conversations. <laughs> So uh, to kind of rewind and go all the way back to the beginning, there's clearly there's a massive amount of chaos right now the coming down yeah. the pipe just with all the commissions. And there are two very clear camps of agents who are like, okay, let's figure this out. And the other one's like, oh my God, what the hell's happening? That's right. For the group who are the, oh my God, what the hell's happening? How yeah. are you guiding them to get kind of unstuck? Um, to yeah. get them to help pull them a little bit out of that overwhelm. Yep. Um, eat, so three things, Sean, and I want everyone, if you're listening to this right now and you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling stuck, you're feeling uh, scared. I really, I'll go slow because I want people to write this down. There are three things you need to do. The first thing is you actually just need to work on your energy, your spirit, your happiness your health, and you. Your career will not be dictated by what the Department of Justice does, what uh, your state NAR or what NAR does, what your state does. Your career is gonna be dictated by how you show up to your clients and how your energy is in front of your clients. Mm. So that's number one, you have to take care of yourself. And in many ways, if the news is frustrating to you, I'd almost challenge you to shut it off and ignore it for a week. Delete CNN, delete uh, Facebook and Instagram from your phone. You know, shut it off and take care of you. If you're not taking care of yourself, it does not matter what happens. You are, you are going to continue to be stuck. As you start to take care of yourself, then you're going to start to emerge and start to be able to breathe again. So that's number one, take care of you first and foremost and protect your energy. Step number two, <clears throat> we need to go into this world where I'm gonna address three, which is learning all the nuances of this whole new world. But before we get there, we actually go, we, had, we need to go old school real estate. So step number two is you have to go to a point in your career where you invest so heavily in relationships. You have to make sure you have a CRM with all of your clients categorized. You have to make sure you have a CRM with your sphere of influence in there. And it's not just having the CRM, now it's a matter of using it. So if you need to create a plan of having, and this is a marketing plan, by the way, this is what I coach to, where we insert events. And by the way, events are large events, small events, and micro events. You need to insert uh, in, uh, connections with people, not just marketing emails, but individual emails, bulk emails, text messages, right? You need to implement mail items. We need to have conversations with people. Everything we send that has, is related to real estate should be something that provides value. But all of this stuff needs to be packaged in a plan so we're not overwhelmed and you need to be using a CRM. The best companies in the world know who they're in a relationship with. 95% of all realtors don't have a CRM that is functional. All it is is a collection of names and emails that they look at and get overwhelmed and then just go back to operating their business from their email. We mm -hmm. have to elevate as professionals in what we do and we got to start to treat our clients, like they are a portfolio of clients, like a financial advisor. And these clients that we're working with and that we worked with in the past are not called past clients. They're called forever clients. And these are our clients forever. And the key to your business 
will not lie in learning the nuances and verbiage of the DOJ and NAR and all that stuff. The key to your business is actually going to be working with people that value you, trust you, and know that you're, you're worth paying a full commission to. Mm. So that's number two. We have to go old school real estate. You got to invest extremely deep into relationships and systems and processes that are going to continue to feed you business now and into the future. Step three then is learning all these nuances. By the way, once it's all shaken out, like it's really tough as a coach. Like I'm actually holding off coaching to a lot of it because it's not done, Sean. Like there's still changes happening every week. We just saw it in California. Like, 100% so true. I don't want to coach to something that may change. So in many ways, I think it's really great to be educated, be ready, to, be, to start to learn practices around getting buyer's agency contracts signed, mm -hmm. doing the things that we do know are coming, but don't get too stressed out about not knowing the exact final way it's going to happen in your state. But instead, get really, really preoccupied with, okay, what are the things that I can actually implement today in my business? Once again, getting a buyer's agency contract signed, having a buyer presentation so you can start to treat buyers like sellers, right? Being able to start to learn some verbiages around commission, right? When I'm sitting with a seller and they're asking me, should I offer a buyer's agent commission? How am I going to answer that, right? So there is stuff you can start to learn on that side. But if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not investing in the core of your business, it doesn't matter how much you learn on this number three, it's always going to be suffering. And it's yeah. just like a nasty cycle. So when you start taking care of yourself, you improve your energy, your health, your happiness, you're working in your business and you're reconnecting with your clients, you're holding events, you're having great conversations with people, you're getting referrals. And then you're implementing all the nuances that are coming our way as far as what the NAR, DOJ, and all of our local associations are going to require. And the challenge is it's going to, there is still changes happening and we may still see changes as all this unfolds and we just need to be nimble. But the happier, healthier you are, the stronger your business is, the greater your ability to, to be nimble and to dance with the changes that are coming with us. That's so good. I, I love that you do that. You did that in the first episode. I asked you a question. You're like, all right, I got this. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and you gave us three amazing examples right there. Yeah. Just, just off the hip, which I totally appreciate. And I, I couldn't agree more. And yeah. this is fascinating. I don't know if you know this fun fact, but number two, your point of the CRM, the number one company in San Francisco is not Twitter, Google, uh, Facebook, any of those companies, it's Salesforce. Yep. Salesforce yep. makes, they've created a CRM. They're That's a it. CRM company. That's all they are. Literally. Oh, yeah. They have the largest tower in all of San Francisco and they employ more people than any other company. So, I mean, if that's not case in point right there, I sincerely have no idea what it is. Yeah. And the, and the best companies in the world care about the P, their clients, right? And you have to look at yourself like the best company in the world. And if you have not talked to your person that you helped buy a house five years, 10 years, 12 years, 15 years ago, you've not had a conversation with them and you don't know anything about them, you, you lost it. You're like, yeah. you, maybe not, you might be able to rekindle it, but you, that's the work we need to do. Yeah. We actually need to go into our past to build our future. Great point. Yeah. And you can totally rekindle it. Totally. You, can, you can be like, oh my gosh, like yeah. bad on me. I should have reached out sooner. Every time I see your house, I think of you. I just wanted to say hi. Totally. I mean, Sean, you legitimately could even not, don't even apologize because then it, you didn't do anything wrong. You just did what's normal. Right. Yeah. So it, and they're not sitting there saying, oh my God, my realtor didn't call me. Right. But what the line I like to say is I was going, this is the text message I actually coached to. Yeah. Um, so if, if you do do my micro trainings and I reuse this, sorry, oh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine a world where you took every one of your past. Actually, Sean, I'm going to challenge you to do this next week with All your right. team. Here we we're go. going to take our past clients and everyone does 10 and you're going to text them and I'll say it slowly so you can write this down. It's I'm very, my pen good. is ready. I was hi, Hey, so-and-so I was going through my records today 
I saw your name and it made me smile. I just want to reach out and say hello and I hope you're doing well. That's it. The brilliance in this message, Sean, is number one, I made them feel like they matter and I made them feel special because I saw their name and it made me smile. Number two, I didn't ask them for anything. Yeah. We're so busy. Like a lot of the agents are like, oh, should I ask them for a cup of coffee? I'm like, no, they're busy. They, they care about you. They don't want to meet you for coffee. Maybe, and maybe, maybe they do. You know, and if that conversation develops where it leads there, great. But all you want to do is say, hi, you're awesome. <laughs> right? That's it. That's it. And that, that text can rekindle these conversations. Yeah. And I, in, I've done that in, in, in person trainings. It's amazing when I have people do that, like 10 minutes into the training, someone will like raise their hand and be like, um, I have a listing appointment. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And all it is, is, is creating connection and relationships, you know, it's, it's true. that's it. So anyways, do that with your team next week. I love and it. It's, I actually wrote it down. It's, and it's super simple. And yeah. I, and I like, you reminded me of something that I heard from Tony Robbins is relationships aren't a, a place to go and get something. They're a place to go and give something. And Ugh. so if you're just saying, Hey, I thought of you. Like, that's it. That's the gift you're giving them, period. You don't ask them for anything. Like, that's don't it. ask for coffee. Don't ask for, like, <laughs> no. do you want a, do you want a neighborhood report? Do you want to see them? <laughs> just, <laughs> just say hi. Just say hi. Yeah. And with a big energetic smile, right? Like, even if it, it could come through that text message, yeah. you know, and that, that's the beauty of it is just that, that connection. We just, and this is where we need to not worry about the outcome. And this is, you got to coach your agents don't worry about what happens if they never text you back don't worry about it yeah. only worry about the process of texting them but then the follow-up to that is go into the crm and update that contact fully make sure you have their address make sure you have their phone number go into facebook or instagram or linkedin and just see what's happened in their life yeah. have they had a birth has there been a death have they gotten divorced did they have a graduation something right? did they yeah. get a new job Right? Uh, did they start playing golf and you play golf and take them out? Uh, yeah, you get the point. It's like, no. that's the other piece that I love throwing into my coaching as well is rethinking social media. And I, I call this reversing social media where you, if you never post anything on social media, but you use Instagram and Facebook every single day, yeah. you could generate so much business. And all you do is you actually, I won't, I won't give too much away, but if all you do is you go through your CRM, you pick a name, you go into mm -hmm. Facebook and Instagram and reverse it. Yeah. What's happening and interact. That's it. Well, in here, here's your, to, to kind of parlay onto the micro event of I'm going to walk my dog. You know who has dogs. Yeah. They post them all over social media. Exactly. You can ping them on the side and be like, Hey, I, I love seeing your, you know, your, cute cocker spaniel i'm going for a walk later at lafayette park did you want to join me exactly exactly and you create a tag in your serum with dog owners exactly and then it, and then it starts and to the person it feels really random and to you it's a system and a process because you do that every saturday morning at eight o'clock and you bring coffee and donuts and there's a dog or whatever you you get you know whatever it is exactly. it, it could be anything and that's the beauty of real estate you know that real estate is really an art form where you get to paint really your own. Is. And I think that's another downfall of a lot of coaching programs. They try to make it a paint by number and it's not paint by number. It is an art form. Because if I try to take you, Sean, and say, Sean, you're gonna do it like this and like this and like this, but it's so against who you are as an authentic person, it's not gonna work. And instead we gotta teach you how to paint and then you're gonna paint your, your masterpiece from there. A hundred percent. Like as soon as you were like, even just like passively explaining like, oh, you are going to do this, this, and this, I immediately shield to go up. I'm like, no, it's not going to yeah. happen. Not going to happen. I just, yeah. I'm not that person. Yeah. But that's it. if, if, if you're like, Hey, like approach it this way, the whole CRM and pinging people and texting, that's totally, that's my flavor. That's my style. It's, it feels, yeah. it feels genuine to me. It yeah. feels good, like I'm, I'm connecting with somebody. Um, 
And, you know, in, in these, these people that I've worked with, the vast majority, I loved working with them. And so, yeah. and I had great conversations with them throughout the whole experience, like them prior to them buying and, and during yeah. it. And so it's not, there's like nothing weird about me just being like, hey, I was just thinking about you. Like, that's it. Hope, exactly. I hope you're doing well. It's great. Like, that's it. <laughs> exactly. And, and the worst thing as a realtor is when you get a phone call or an email from someone and they you haven't talked to in a while and you're like, oh my God, like, I love this person. And then you, you realize, thank God they called me. Yeah. I literally haven't talked to them in 10 years. Yeah. And like, like I God, dropped the call. call right? Yeah. Okay. And it, anyway, so it's like one of those things where we want to get to this point where our business is just magically producing these connections yeah. and these, these referrals. Cause a referral, when, when you are referred to someone, like if I asked my friend for a financial advisor, I'm most likely not going to go in and negotiate that financial advisor's fees. Right. Right. Like, cause no, he's like the expert. Right. Now, if I go online and I kick, click, three or four financial advisors, I'm probably negotiating their fees because I don't 100%. know that. Yeah. And that's, I think this difference we want to shift to. If all my business is getting sent to me through referrals, <laughs> chances are it doesn't matter what the NAR does because I'm collecting a full fee. Well, and that's the importance of, and this comes <laughs> from my experience of selling luxury memberships. That's the importance yeah. of not discounting your price. Because okay. when I was selling, we, we were selling luxury memberships, like these were a few hundred dollars a month plus a very healthy initiation fee. If at any point marketing decided to do a 0% fee initiation, all those people were then referred and said, I paid yeah. zero to join. Now I have an uphill battle to get you to pay two, three, four, five, six hundred bucks. Right. And so if you maintain your prices, it's much easier to maintain your prices. Otherwise, right. you are going to have a hell of a time getting back to where you were. Like the friend saying, oh, they threw in staging. They discounted their prices. They did. They threw in this and they did that. That friend that they're referring, they're, you're not you're going to have to do the same thing. And eventually so, you erode your whole the whole business. And that yeah. all of that goes back to us in our lives if if we as agents are fatigued from this whole covid so is everybody else That's and right. their decision making process are totally burnt out too so when their best friend says oh my god you have to talk to this guy he's amazing yeah their filters to like to vet you are are way dropped their guards yeah. are way down because their best friend is is giving them the green light. This is safe. This dude's safe. He's cool. Yeah. He's one of us. You're halfway home. Like you're more than halfway. Like you're you're ninety eight percent of the way. As long as you don't screw up that first conversation, That's you've it. got the job. That's it. Um, <clears throat> That's it. But but I, but I, that will only happen by you. Just got to be there. You have to be in That's front it. of people. And exactly. It's not. It's not hard. So as always, man, I, I really, I love your approach. I love how you just, you really bring a, a human, the human element back to yeah. it all. It's not, you know, these aren't numbers on a keypad and we're just dialing for dollars. Like these are real humans that we really genuinely want to connect with. That's right. And going through real human problems as well. Right. And when we yeah. show up with value and, and we help people, we, there's nothing that most people feel better than helping another person through a challenging time. Yeah. Right. And it makes you, it just, it's a cycle. So it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, Sky, that's, um, we're at the top of the hour, so we've got to wrap, but I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Um, and as always, all that you've shared with the audience. I appreciate you, man. And you, you do such a beautiful job interviewing people and bringing a great message into the world. I love listening to your podcast. So keep, keep up the amazing work.